Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. All right, we're gonna do something today I've been trying to do for a couple months now, I wanted to do for a couple months and just haven't really been ready to try it. Um, as you recall, a couple months ago, I bought a barbecue slash smoker combination. And today what I wanna do is I wanna try experimenting with the smoker for the first time. Now, actually, most of this video is actually gonna be shot tomorrow, but since there's a little bit of prep work that needs to happen uh, before um, I actually put the meat on the grill, uh, we're gonna start that now and uh, get the meat ready so that uh, it can kind of sit in the, in the refrigerator overnight and kind of soak in the spices so that we're ready to throw it on the grill tomorrow. So let's go. So this is the star of today's show here. As you know, this is the uh, Pit Boss barbecue that I bought couple months ago and I have used this side a number of times uh, for just straight barbecuing but I haven't really done a whole lot with the smoker end of things. Um, I actually did use the thing the other night uh, just to experiment with it uh, and cooked a steak just to kind of see what I was getting into but um, I would have been a little apprehensive about starting with this because I wasn't really sure what to do but I've watched some videos online, including a couple of Jeff Kidd's videos on smoking, and um, I think I'm ready to try this. I've got some beef ribs, and uh, we're gonna do we're gonna cook beef ribs on the smoker, and uh, it's a I think a probably a multi-hour affair, but we need to start by preparing the meat, uh, by putting the spices on the meat, and letting it sit overnight. So let's go in the house and get ready. So these are the ribs I chose. Uh, I thought they looked really meaty. It's actually two racks of ribs, uh, so we're gonna cook them both. And I'm kind of making this up as I go along, um, kind of trying to figure this out. So I went looking for a rub for the meat, uh, and uh, I found this. This may be the worst stuff in the world, I don't know, but we're gonna give it a shot, and we're gonna try this and see what happens. And you know what, we'll learn from it and try other things if this doesn't work. But the first thing they recommend doing is uh, unwrapping the meat and powdering it uh, liberally with this rib rub. And then we're gonna wrap that up in aluminum foil. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight. And then we'll pick this up tomorrow and we'll continue this. Now, before you put the, uh, the rub on the meat, you wanna remove the membrane that's on the back of the ribs. I've actually flipped this over and all of this white stuff needs to come off because uh, the meat is underneath it. And if you don't get this off, your, your ribs are gonna be uh, a lot tougher and a lot more chewy. So for what they recommend you do is you just kind of get a, get a knife under it on the edge there. Uh, they suggest like a butter knife and just uh, peel it up a little bit and then either pull it off with your hands or a paper towel. Uh, I've seen Jeff do this on his videos too, so obviously this is something you gotta do. So I'm just gonna literally get under here with a knife just a little bit, just to get it started. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, so you gotta find just a little edge that you can get onto here. And of course, I did this with the other one. Uh, it came off really easy. This one's gonna, uh, of course, make a fool out of me, but that's the way it is. Ah, the joys of live video. And then we're gonna thoroughly coat both sides. They say do it generously. I think the reason, the big part of the reason they say do it uh, generously is because they just want you to use more of their products so you buy more, but that's okay. I'm gonna follow the instructions anyway and we're gonna do it real generous. And I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. And on this side. I'm gonna make sure you get a little bit on the uh, in the in the wrapper too, a little bit in the foil too, so that when we do it, we're also coating the sides. All right, that looks pretty good, huh? All right, let's wrap this thing up, throw it in the fridge, and in 24 hours, we'll be ready to throw this thing on the grill. And now they're all wrapped up, and let's throw them in the fridge for the night. We'll come back to these in 24 hours, and then we'll finish this video up. 
So I captured another little intruder in the house. This one's tiny. Look at the markings on that one. He's about an inch and a half long. He's just a baby. I don't know if they all look like that when they're babies and they just kind of get more uniform colors when they grow older or if this is just some species I haven't seen before. But whatever you are, you're a looker. It's 21 hours later, the meat's still in the refrigerator soaking in the rub. Um, and I'm gonna start preparing the grill here. First thing I gotta do is I gotta start heating up the grill and I'm also gonna use the uh, meat probes uh, that come with it because that's a very useful little feature. And since the recipe calls for cooking the meat until it reaches a specific internal temperature, hey, I've got the probes, let's use them. So I gotta string the probes up. I've never used them before, obviously, because I've never really used this side of the grill. So fortunately, there's this nice little hole on the side here where the uh, cords go through and then they just kind of plug right onto the control panel of the uh, of the uh, grill itself. So I'm going to string that through and I'll catch up with you in a minute. So I got the heat probes all set up now. Uh, they're plugged into the individual ports on the control panel. They're running through the little hole, the little access hole in the side of the barbecue and they're actually ready. They're sitting here ready to be uh, plugged into the meat uh, as soon as I put the meat on. So. First thing I got to do, according to the instructions, is we want to power up the grill and set the temperature for 250 degrees. And so that's what that is. We're setting up for 250 degrees, and uh, it's registering the probes right now. They're registering the good, the same number, which is a good thing because they're sitting right next to each other. I hope they're uh, re registering the same temperature. So uh, we're gonna let this thing heat up, and let's go and take a look at our meat. Oh yeah, that looks like we got a good start here. This is gonna be good. So I'm just gonna let these kind of uh, rest at room temperature a little bit because they're in the refrigerator and they're a little bit cold. Uh, and we'll do that while we're having the grill warm up because that's gonna take a little while too. Because that's the key ingredient to making good smoked ribs. You gotta do everything really slowly. And as you can see, the key ingredient to smoked uh, ribs is the smoke and the smoke is coming along nice. And just in case you wondered, we're going to be smoking these with hickory pellets. And I filled up my hopper almost all the way up to the top here. Uh, we're only going to be cooking this for about three hours, so I won't need a full hopper of it. But this should keep us going for a while. Yep, the temperature's going up pretty quick. It's already up to 210 degrees, 215 degrees. We'll be ready to put this on in just a couple minutes. All right, so we're up to 250 degrees, so we are ready to do it. So I've already actually started bringing the meat out here. I've got the first probe uh, put into the first uh, rack of ribs. And as you can see, it's reporting correctly because it's been in the refrigerator, so it's 55 degrees internal while the other probe is at 75 degrees. So let's throw this first one on here. All right, here we go. Uh, both of them are on, the probes are both in here. And so let's uh, just let it cook for a while and see what happens. See you in a couple hours. Two hours have passed by now, and so we're gonna come check in on our uh, ribs. Yep, they're starting to look pretty good. Uh, you can tell the meat's kind of pulling back from the bone because the bone's sticking out a little bit more than it was uh, when it was uh, when it was cold. So that's good. That's sort of what we want to happen. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna increase the temperature inside to 300 degrees. We're gonna cook it for another. Uh, another uh, hour or so until we get an internal temperature of uh, 205 degrees. So we're gonna watch this. We're also gonna flip it about halfway through. All right, we've only passed uh, the 30 minute mark now at the higher temperature, but both of, the, uh, both of the ribs are now recording the temperature that they should be. In fact, they're a little above it. We are supposed to hit about 205, we're about 215. So I decided to stop the cooking process early and we're gonna take these off and we're gonna do the next step, which is basically we're gonna wrap them up a little bit and uh, let them rest for a bit. So the directions actually say to, to let it rest uh, by wrapping it in butcher's paper. I don't have any butcher's paper, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of aluminum foil and we'll wrap it up that way. And in 20 minutes, we'll be ready to eat. We are at the 20 minute mark now. So what I'm gonna think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna uh, open up the little one and we're gonna have that one for dinner. The other one we can uh, just put, put away and uh, warm up at some other point. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, like I said, I, I never had any intention of eating this whole thing in one sitting. 
Um, <laughs> people have been commenting I've been losing weight. I think maybe I have, but that would definitely reverse the trend if I ate both of those. So let's open up the little one and see what we got. Oh yeah, this meat is so tender the bones are already coming off on their own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and put it on a plate and we're going to bring some of that uh, Ruby's barbecue sauce out that I bought about a year ago when I visited Ruby's barbecue place. I do actually want to try this before I try the barbecue sauce on it just to see what the what the finished product is without any anything addition to it. But this looks good, it smells good, and I can't wait to try this. So the first thing I want to do with this is uh, just taste the meat by itself and see what uh, see how it is. Uh, might be a little bit overcooked just because this was the smaller of the two ribs and this one got a little bit above uh, 205 degrees, but we'll see. Yeah, it's actually really good. Um, it's got good flavor. Uh, you can kind of see, one of the things I'm told is when you smoke the meat, you ought to see like a, when you cut it, you ought to see a little ring around the outside of it. And that's kind of where the, uh, the smoke, uh, you know, kind of permeated into the meat. And that's where you're getting your flavor. So I definitely see that here. Um, this was right at the end of the, of the rib. So it's a little drier out here. But it was actually pretty moist and very, very flavorful. So we're going to put some barbecue sauce on this and let's go full bore on it. See what I mean about the, the ring on the meat here, the outer edge? You can actually see the smoke uh, has permeated into the meat uh, pretty far there. So that's kind of like I said what you want to see. Um, it is, like I said, very moist and very, very tender. Uh, like I said, a little chewy on the outer edge, but I'm starting to get a little bit more into it now. And uh, definitely really good. I think for my first attempt on the smoker, it was actually a good result. Um, I do need to learn in the future, I gotta really keep an eye on that internal meat temperature because that, the littler rack of ribs that I ate, um, I think it got a little bit burned on the outside, especially on the ends. It was still really juicy and really flavorful throughout and the barbecue sauce was a good good mix with it. Uh, but, um, you know, really good results. Uh, and I, I will definitely uh, experiment with this some more. But I think that's all that I have for today. So thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.